You're watching WPTA-TV, 21 Alive News at 11, with Keith Edwards, Melissa Long, Chief Meteorologist Curtis Smith, and Dean Pantazzi. Good evening, I'm Melissa Long. And I'm Keith Edwards. Topping our first seven minutes of news, President Bush has three goals, and it will take an active Congress to achieve them. CNN's John King tells us about his war against terror and accounting scandals. The president vigorously defended his past business practices and accused Democrats of playing Oklahoma, politics Georgia, with the debate over corporate responsibility. The way I view it is it's old style politics and I guess that's the way it's going to be. This news conference was dominated by the corporate corruption debate and Mr. Bush travels to Wall Street Tuesday to outline new steps he says are critical to restoring investor confidence in the economy. Administration sources tell CNN the president will call for corporate CEOs to personally vouch for financial statements and other public company reports. Potential jail time for corporate officials who deliberately file misleading financial reports. New powers to revoke CEO bonuses if financial misconduct is proven. New authority to bar company officers who abuse their powers from serving on corporate boards or other leadership positions. And a new requirement that corporate leaders who buy or sell significant chunks of company stock disclose those transactions within two business days. Current law allows up to a year. We have a duty to every worker shareholder and investor in America to punish the guilty, to close loopholes and protect employee pensions. And we will. Mr. Bush also promised to seek more money and more investigators for the Securities and Exchange Commission and rejected growing calls for his hand-picked SEC chairman to step aside. Harvey Pitt it was put in place to clean up a mess. And he's working hard to do that. The accounting scandals are now a major midterm election issue. This ad, part of an effort by Democrats and their allies, to suggest Mr. Bush is in no position to lead the charge for reform. Bush played a key role at Harkin Energy. They used Enron-style accounting to hide losses. Bush sold out early. The Bush team? Dick Cheney was CEO of Halliburton. More Enron-style accounting. Mr. Bush said Democrats would be better off working with the White House on reform legislation. Democrats say they still haven't heard a satisfactory explanation of why Mr. Bush was eight months late reporting a major stock transaction 11 years ago. But the president says he was cleared of any wrongdoing. And one goal of his big Wall Street speech is to make the case that the pressing issue now is restoring investor confidence in the economy. John King, CNN, the White House. Getting to the bottom of an accounting scandal isn't as easy as it sounds. Two former WorldCom executives refused to answer questions, pleading the Fifth Amendment during a House panel hearing. Both men claimed they did nothing wrong, even though $4 billion in expenses was hidden last year, and a profit was claimed when the company actually was in the red. As we first reported yesterday, security measures prevented a Fort Wayne man from taking a weapon onto a plane. A handgun was discovered in the unidentified man's carry-on bag at Fort Wayne International Airport. Officials say the passenger was on his way to Las Vegas. Members of the FBI and Allen County Prosecutor's Office are investigating the incident. It's still not known what sparked a deadly blaze near New Haven. A house fire in the 4,000 block of Philly Avenue claimed the life of 21-year-old Jacob Scott Bell just before 1 o'clock this morning. An autopsy shows Bell died from asphyxia due to smoke inhalation. An investigation is continuing. A two-vehicle accident claims the life of a Columbia City man. Officials say Paul Mossberg failed to stop at the intersection of Business 30 West and U.S. 30 around 1 o'clock this afternoon. Mossberg's vehicle collided with a car driven by Daniel Clendenin. Mossberg was killed in the accident. Clendenin is in fair condition at Lutheran Hospital. Five Huntington children attended their father's funeral today as his accused killer makes his first court appearance. 25-year-old Joseph Cast of Fort Wayne was working on a new home construction site in Huntington County on July 3rd when he allegedly stabbed 44-year-old building inspector Earl Bowman four times. While tests showed that Cast, who had a 10th grade education, had methamphetamine and marijuana in his system, his family and attorney don't understand exactly what happened family that Joe is and has been uh, a pretty peaceable individual. I mean, this is just not, uh, this is, it surprises a lot of people that these allegations are made and that this whole event occurred. So that's why we'll have to take some time and see what, what actually happened. Cast's trial date will be set during a hearing October 14th. An Ohio man will have a lot of time to think about the damage he could have caused to his son. Richard Pullen has been charged with child endangering after leaving his four-year-old son in a car for 15 hours. 
The 35-year-old Columbus man told officials he was an alcoholic and didn't remember where he left his son. The boy was found a block away from Pullen's apartment. A California police officer is captured on film using excessive force. Jeremy Morris was videotaped slamming 16-year-old Donovan Jackson onto a car trunk, punching him and then trying to choke him. The teen was a passenger in a vehicle with an expired license plate. Morris has been suspended with pay. A family feud is brewing over a baseball star's body. Ted Williams' daughter has tried to prevent her father's body from being frozen in a cryonics lab. She's accusing her half-brother of trying to preserve their father so he can sell his DNA. Williams died last Friday at the age of 83. A law protecting Hoosiers from telemarketers is safe for now. A circuit court judge ruled Indiana's no-call list does not violate the Constitution. Great. An Evansville vacuum salesman claimed his freedom of speech rights were being violated and that insurance, real estate, and newspaper companies were unfairly exempted. Preservationists are trying to bridge the past with the future. The historic 100-year-old Range Line Road, or 123 Bridge in Huntington, is on the verge of being destroyed. Officials say it can only handle five tons, is impossible for big vehicles to pass on it, and interferes with emergency crews' access to a subdivision. The mess in Texas is astronomical. More than 30 inches of rain have fallen in the past week in the southern and western portion of the state. Nine people have died in the deadly storms. 23 counties have been declared disaster areas, and officials expect losses to be near $1 billion. In tonight's good news, one Fort Wayne family has learned that blood is definitely thicker than water. 21 Alive's Jeanette Lude tells us about two heroic boys who saved their sister from drowning. Just four days ago, the scene with these children was not as picturesque. A family picnic on July 4th turned tense when Peter Tipman's oldest son ran to tell him about trouble at the pool. When I made it over to the deck, they, uh, uh, my next younger son was setting my daughter down on the deck and she was unconscious and not breathing. Seven-year-old Drew had pulled his three-year-old sister Emily out of the water after she had slipped through a play tube. She was underwater for no more than a minute when her nine-year-old brother Peter saw her. We grew up with a pool for 20 years around my house. We know the rules. We know life jackets. We know to watch the kids. But the one thing that surprised me the most is it happens so fast. No matter how, it seems like no matter how close you're watching for them, uh, it can happen in a split second. A relative performed mouth-to-mouth -mouth that helped to revive Emily before emergency crews arrived at the Fort Wayne home. Emily has returned to her three-year-old self with great ease, but her brothers, Peter and Drew, are still getting over what happened. They really worked as a team, and I can't be proud enough of them. Do they realize what they did? No. They, they, they can, I don't think they can grasp it yet. Someday they will. There's yet another happy ending to the story. The Tipmans plan to learn CPR from the Red Cross at the end of this month. Reporting from Flutter Road, I'm Jeanette Liu, 21 Alive News. That's important to know that. It well, sure is. Well, we may not need to jump into a pool to cool down. Curtis Smith joins us now from the Weather Center with the overnight and morning forecast. Curtis? Thankfully, Mother Nature is going to provide a cool down of her own, and we need one after a high of 92 today. Should be back to the 80s tomorrow, and really, for the rest of the week, some comfortable weather. The change will come because of some thunderstorms tonight. We will have a couple of those thunder showers moving in later on tonight. 70 degrees for a low. Then tomorrow, starting off around 74. Still a chance of rain in the first half of the day. Should be dry into the afternoon and most of the week looking dry and indeed more comfortable. We'll have that for you. And of course, give you a look at Supercell Live, our Doppler radar coming up in just a couple of minutes. Keith, most of All right, thank you, Curtis. And that wraps up your first seven minutes of news. A little later, find out why a former vice president was swinging in the Summit City. And we'll have the winning lottery numbers. But first, it won't be long before the Summit City is bustling with activity. Find out why when 21 Alive, your home for news returns. I'm Ted Koppel. Coming up on Nightline, the Pledge of Allegiance controversy. What role should religion play in politics? And following Nightline, the premiere of a new companion broadcast, Up Close. My interview with David Letham. Tonight. We love to camp, we love to hike, be outside, eat good food, grill. Working out builds up a great big appetite, and he's always hungry. I'm a grill man. Give it to me and I'll grill it. Walmart Supercenter is everything you need in one place. Your food, your clothing. 
camping supplies? I'm all about me. <laughs> I, I'm a big meaty. He's a carnivore. I love the Super Center. You can get something for everybody. I love fresh produce. The fruit is so delicious, really fresh. You can find everything you need, lots of variety, everything at a great low price. Come on over. We'll feed you. <laughs> Look at our son. College boy. I'm so proud. I'm just glad to be home. You know what I miss most? Golden grams. I think I'm gonna have a bowl when I get home. Maybe two. Heck, I might eat them all. <laughs> the irresistible taste of Golden Grahams is something everyone in the family wants for themselves. Golden Grahams. Ah. Go get your own. Wanna know what fun feels like? Come to Cedar Point. Snoopy Rocks on Ice brings a smile to kids of any age. Cedar Point fun comes in every shape and size, with thrills for the littlest thrill seekers and a pint-sized price to match. Bigger kids find bigger adventures at the world's best amusement park, where you can laugh, play, and spend a perfect day. Get to Meyer to save $10 on weekday and $5 on weekend tickets. Then get here. Cedar Point. Feel the fun. Hey, Dad! Can I borrow the car tonight? The Teenage Driver Safety and Education Program from Indiana Farm Bureau Insurance encourages teenagers to drive responsibly by awarding them a $1,000 savings bond for three years of safe Dad? driving. Because when your teenager asks to borrow the car, wouldn't it be nice if all you needed to say was, Hey, have a great time. Three Rivers Festival time is almost here. And organizers are making sure there's something for everyone. Crews will spend the next few days putting up tents at Headwaters Park. Plus, kitty rides will be added to the downtown area as well. The giant midway is also being set up at the Memorial Coliseum and will open Thursday afternoon. The 34th annual festival officially kicks off this Saturday with the 21 Alive Three Rivers Festival Parade. It's scheduled to begin at 9.50 in the morning near the corner of Wayne and Van Buren Streets. It actually starts a little bit before that area, and you'll see it right here on 21 Alive. <laughs> Former Vice President Dan Quayle hit the greens during his visit to the area. The Quayle Center Classic Golf Outing and Charity Auction was held at Orchard Ridge. All money raised will be used for programs and exhibits at the Dan Quayle Center in Huntington. Actually, I think it starts at 9.30 at Wayne and Theme. Yes, but well, it, we didn't want to start that again like we did earlier. <laughs> I know, but the grand stands and the judges scan, yes. are at the That's right. Van Buren location. Okay. Up next, Curtis will let us know if we'll cool down. <laughs> Dean lets us know if a strike is in the future for America's favorite pastimes, and a little later, helping area students get the tools they need for school when your late news returns. Serving Fort Wayne for over 90 years, Cap and Cork, a family tradition. Today's lecture, the meaning of nuts and bolts. Nuts are either a food or a state of mental being. Bolts could be hardware or a measurement of cloth. At Denver Mattress, they have uniquely combined the less ordinary meanings to give its customers extraordinary savings. In other words, Denver Mattress is having a nuts and bolts sale, which means we're offering top quality mattress sets at almost crazy prices just because they're covered using mixed and remnant fabrics. And through July 8th only, get one year no payments and no interest. However, bolt can also mean the need to move fast. I've been looking so long for what I want. <laughs> she twists me up and then she turns me down. The Sea Coop with panorama glass roof. <laughs> Use it how you see fit. Value unlike any other. Make me feel good. I'm Chief Meteorologist Curtis Smith. Here are today's high and low and the record setters for this date. Your forecast is next, right here on 21 Alive. And it's the bottom of the ninth with two down, tied at three apiece. Stepping up for the Wizards is Bob Dabrowski, the new designated hitter. Here's the windup and the pitch. And it's a deep shot, straight to left field. Look out, you can kiss that one. Goodbye. Home run for Bob Dabrowski, wonderful husband and father of two. Join the Wizards every Sunday and get four great tickets, hot dogs, soft drinks, and souvenirs, all for just $40. It's the Wizards Family Fun Pack. Call 482-6400 today. Cooling off in the pool this summer? Before you jump in, here's some things the Fort Wayne firefighters want you to know. Take a water safety class and learn CPR. 
Install a fence separating your pool from the house and play yard. Have a phone close by in case of emergency. And never leave the children unattended around any body of water. Swim rings, floaties, and other inflatable toys are not life jackets and should never take the place of adult supervision. Your Fort Wayne Firefighters Local 124 and these neighborhood pool dealers want you to have fun and play it safe. Fresh and tender, you'd think you were there. Certified Angus beef from Meyer, part of our 200% money back meat and seafood guarantee. Yippee Kaye! The Dean of Sports, only on 21 Alive, your home for sports. The heat continues and the ground is parched in some areas. Yeah, we need a little rain. Surprising after that uh, amount of rain we received yeah. about a week and a half ago. You would think that would do it, but well, we do need to see it. ended up in rain. everyone's basement, so I Right, so that's the went. problem. We need a little more of it, and we need to lose some of the heat. We had a high of 92 this afternoon. Tonight, we're still very warm. 79 degrees right now down at Headwaters Park. A light, uh, nice scene there. and. Probably going to be a pretty nice night for the most part, but we will deal with a little rain overnight and into the first part of the day tomorrow. Scattered thunder showers, 74 at 8 o'clock in the morning, 82 at noon, 83 at 6. The sun should be breaking out tomorrow afternoon. We should be dry by that time. Just some scattered activity in the first half of the day. 79 right now, dew point at 68, relative humidity 69%. Winds out of the southwest at 12 miles per hour. Pressure is falling. No rainfall officially at the airport so far. It's probably going to change, although it looks to be a couple more hours here. We've got a line of thunderstorms just north of I-94 in Michigan and moving to the south. Movement pretty uh, noticeable here on NextRad radar. It has been moving to the south all evening long, taking its sweet time, though. So a few more hours before this line of showers and thunderstorms move in. Also more back into northern Illinois, but that probably going to miss us to the west and then to the south. It's this line running through Wisconsin and Michigan that we'll be dealing with here later on. And then again in the first part of the day tomorrow. Lots of sunshine for us today. The clouds starting to get a little bit closer. We will be mostly cloudy for at least the first part of the day tomorrow before the sun does start to break out once again tomorrow afternoon once that